I'm Chris. And I'm Rachel. And we are out and about in Simcoe County. Today, we're out at Scales Nature Park. And we are going to be looking for, guess what? Snakes. Snakes. If I don't find a snake, or at least touch a snake today at Scales Nature Park, I've got problems. Well, we're definitely going to see snakes, but I don't know if you're going to be able to use your snake hook. Well, we contacted Jeff and he said they have snakes, turtles, they have all sorts of native species as well as exotics. So we're going to find all different sorts of things. And he told us we can wander around the river as well. Really? So, yeah. I'm looking forward to that part, get my feet wet. You got your dip net? I do have my dip net. And in case as you usual. don't bring your own, they have them, they provide really? them, so I might even get one. Excellent. So we're going to check the trails and you can tell it's hot out today already. So I think I may go for a swim. I think that might be a good idea. So let's go check, see what we can find. Sounds like a good idea. We're here at Scales Nature Park and I'm speaking with Jeff Hathaway. So thank you for letting us come out and check out this location. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. It's our pleasure. <laughs> we really love reptiles. We've been all over Simcoe County now looking for reptiles. We've Great. been looking for snakes. We've seen a turtle, which okay. was very cool, but we knew we were going to find them here, so we well, thought we'd come and check them out. We have almost all of them here, so it's a great place to come to learn about them. All right, and I think we're going to get started with one of the most common, right? You said you've got some snapping turtles in here? We do have snapping turtles, and they are a species at risk now. They are declining in numbers, but they're still fairly abundant in this area. This is a common snapping turtle, and I don't mean common because it's plain. I mean common because that's the type of species, right? Absolutely, that's its official name, common snapping turtle, and they are still fairly abundant in central Ontario, but their numbers are declining quite rapidly, unfortunately. That's why they got added to the list of species at risk three years ago. So this would be something that people would see when they're driving up the roads, especially in the early season in yeah, the spring? In, uh, Late May from uh, about mid-May, say, until uh, the end of June is potentially the nesting season for snapping turtles. It varies from one year to the next with the weather. And that's when you see them out on the side of the road. Uh, that's what they're doing is they're laying their eggs. And it, it's mostly just the females people will see on the crossing the roads? Usually, although males do wander around on land at times to move from uh, one area where they're feeding to maybe another area as one wetland dries up, for example. But uh, as far as the egg laying goes, that's definitely just the girls. They find a good spot, dig a hole, lay the eggs, and then leave. Now, unfortunately, they're often dug up within a day by raccoons and eaten. So that's another challenge for turtles uh, in Ontario. And, and how old would this one be? Well, this one, we don't know its, uh, its history entirely, so I'm not sure of its exact age. And you can't tell the age by looking at them. You can't base it on their size or anything like that. Uh, you know, that some of them get quite a lot larger than this, but they aren't necessarily older. How long can they live for? We don't know. They can go over 100 years, but some evidence suggests they could go over 200 years. And the fact is we have no really good information on that because we don't live that long and we haven't been studying them that long. Now, when we talk to people about reptiles, everybody has a story about a snapping turtle that is as big as a truck tire. How Absolutely. big do they really get? Well, the record size is quite a lot less than a truck tire. Okay. Uh, this one is certainly nowhere near the record size. Record size would be about that long for the carapace. So that's starting from the front of the carapace right up here. And the measurement goes to the back of the carapace right there in a straight line, not around the curve. So if you imagine a turtle going back to about there. But keep in mind that turtle is also this wide and a lot deeper and would be tremendously heavier than this. So a turtle like that could weigh 60 pounds, it's about 30 kilograms. It's, uh, it's be quite a large specimen. And the key when you're measuring it is to watch out for the bitey part. Absolutely, the mouth on the end, which is yeah. why they've got such a bad reputation. Everybody thinks that they're dangerous animals. That, that's right. They have a very powerful bite, but it's really easy to avoid. On land, give them a little bit of space. Don't just walk up and poke your finger in their face and you won't have any trouble. In the water, they don't snap because they're not scared in the water. They have no predators in the water. So swimming with them is no problem. There's no danger uh, out there. They're... What these guys mostly eat is already dead. They're predominantly scavengers. So, so they're, they're like vultures all... with shells. Yeah, absolutely. I prefer to think of them as nature's garbage people. So they're vital to maintain the healthy Absolutely, water system. Absolutely, they are important for that. And they'll eat dead animals inside the water as well, well as... Out. Only in the water. They only can't in swallow the water. their food if they're out of the water. They really? have to eat in the water. I did not know that. Most people don't. This one is the Blanding's turtle. You can see that yellow chin that it's got. That's the best way to identify them. And it does also have a fairly high dome shape to, uh, to the carapace. That's the upper part of the shell. So it has sort of a look like an old army helmet, if you can see that, uh, that curve to the shell. And uh, this is an adult. 
This is a fairly old turtle. It was actually hit by a car 40 years ago. And then somebody patched up its shell, and unfortunately they didn't put it back out in the wild, which would have been the better thing to do. And uh, so she's been in captivity ever since. So now it can't and, be re released? No, it can't be released. Nobody even remembers now where it came from. 40 years ago, when she was hit by a car, she was already a big adult turtle. She was, was this size. When she so she hit. could be 60 years old. She, well, she'd have to be at least 60 to 65 to have even started laying eggs back then. To be wow. this size, odds are good this turtle's over 100 years old. So this one is the focus of our research project in Muskoka. We're looking at all the turtles up there, but this is especially our target species. And we're actually, uh, when we find them currently, we're putting little radio transmitters on them and we can follow them around for the next three years to learn where they lay their eggs and where they spend the winter time, where they're crossing roads. We're looking for hot spots uh, where they're getting hit on the roads so we might be able to inform future efforts to make the roads safer for them, that kind of stuff. You were telling me earlier that there's an app now there is. Phone. There is, absolutely. If people see something and they're not sure what it is, they're welcome to get a hold of us. If they can send us a picture and it, who doesn't have a, a camera phone or something on them these days, uh, you know, they can easily uh, send it to us and we'll identify it for them. But they may be able to do it on a self-serve way now because if you've got one of these handy smartphones, you can now simply download what's called the Ontario Nature Reptile and Amphibian app and it's free, of course and you can go through all the different uh, snakes and turtles and frogs of the province. So let's say you saw a turtle, you hit the turtles button, we think, uh, oh, it might be one of these turtles. There's a Midland painted turtle, and you can see the picture. You can scroll through different pictures to see pictures of the babies, etc. You can look at maps of where they live, and best of all, you can hit the report a sighting button, and it gives you uh, some blanks to fill in. It takes the GPS coordinates off your phone, and it goes to the Provincial Atlas Project for trying to maintain records of where all these things live in the province. Some of these things are so rare, it's very hard for researchers to even go out and try and find them. And so if the public can help participate, if they luck into seeing something, they can submit the record. That's really, really helpful. And you're a so. reptile person like me, so an app like this is big news for it's us. It's huge, huge We got news acknowledged on a technological level. Absolutely, it's, it's so great. Now this is called the Ontario Nature Reptile and Amphibian Atlas app. It is free. It's out now for iPhone and soon for Android. And uh, one thing I have said is that uh, they keep stats of who, if you have a sighting, you know, it knows that it comes from you, right? Yep. Uh, so I said anybody who gets more sightings than me gets free admission to Scales. Oh, nice. But I'm the leader in the province so far. So they might have some it's catching up It's a competition. Up That's a reptile it's person a competition thing as well, right? Now. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Game on. When we come back, more Turtle Talk with Jeff. back with Jeff and this time we're looking at the smallest turtle species found in Ontario, the spotted turtle. It is tiny and yet this one's full grown. This turtle could again be over a hundred years. We, we really don't know its age. Now this one you can see these yellow polka dots on it. Uh, it's not overly spotted. Some individuals have more spotting than this and sometimes people get them confused with the Blanding's turtle because it has some white flecks on the shell. Right. This one really it looks like yellow polka dots and it doesn't have the yellow chin as well if you look uh, closely there. There's a fair bit of orange and black color on it and the it's spots beautiful continue onto the head. It does have beautiful the colors there. and that's one of the biggest problems with spotted turtles. They are beautiful, they're small and they don't bite and they're so cute when people find them, they, want to they often them, take them, them home, put them in a fish tank. It is illegal in Ontario, but that doesn't always stop people from doing it. Right. And of course, uh, it may be illegal here, but there are other places where it's not illegal. So if the turtles leave the province, then after that it would be almost impossible to, to stop them, right? We think that uh, you know, we can coexist with all of these creatures uh, quite readily if we uh, just learned a little bit more about them and knew how to make sure our activities didn't impact them. It's seeing a picture of it is one thing, but you know you get a much better feel for it, and you remember the experience better when you see the actual turtle. And you develop a, like a connection with it. 
That's right, and that personal connection really helps a, a lot. If people feel more connected to, uh, to nature, uh, and especially to turtles, then uh, so much the better. And we've got one more turtle. We so do we have the have? painted turtle as well. Would you like to hold this I one? I would, absolutely. This is the painted turtle with the red marks and the yellow marks uh, on its head and uh, on its legs, and uh, it's a fairly colorful species. So this is a Midland painted turtle. It is native, and it's still the only fairly abundant turtle in the, uh, in the region. It's the only one that's not a species at risk. And you'll see lots of them around, uh, I hope, in your travels. Not just in Midland, that's just the, the name Absolutely, of them. Absolutely, that's right. There is an eastern and a western one as well, uh, located in other parts of, uh, of North America. And this one's a hunter in the water as well? Yeah, the they, they all eat meat uh, to, to some extent. This one will eat anything from snails and aquatic insect larvae to small fish and tadpoles and pretty much whatever anything uh, it can get in its mouth. Excellent. Well, do you want to put these ones down? We'll see which one sure. moves a little faster. Sure. Have a turtle race. And go. They're off. That's a turtle race. That's exactly what yeah. I expect when yeah, I see a turtle that's race. That's pretty much uh, full speed for uh, the turtle race. If you're going to live to be 100 years old, why do you have to be in a hurry, right? You don't need to be in a rush. That's right. Oh, it looks like yours is taking it. I put my money on the snapping turtle much, much earlier. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. Let's uh, go inside. Maybe we'll take a look at some snakes as well. Okay, let's do that. Woo, look at her go now that I'm picking her up. <laughs> now we're here talking about snakes with Jeff, and we have this little fella in your hands right now. What type of snake is this? Well, this is a milk snake that we have uh, in central Ontario. You can find them all through this region, although they're pretty secretive, so people often don't realize they're around. But uh, if you move a, a rock or some old wood that's lying on the ground, you might find one of these snakes hiding underneath. Milk snakes I've seen are more colorful. This one's kind of dullish. This, well, it's a blotchy brown color that's quite typical for them, but uh, they can be uh, a little brighter sometimes. Depends on the individual. And of course, farther south, the more uh, tropical milk snakes in Central America are very bright red, uh, yellow, and black. Yeah, those are the ones that I think of when I hear milk that's snake. Right. If you see them in the pet store, that's typically what you would see. Uh, and those ones can be fine as pets, but uh, the native ones here do look like this. Chris was telling me about big balls of snakes coming out of hibernation in Alberta. I don't know if you want to tell everybody that story. Sure, uh, garter snakes. Yes. I'm a big fan of garter snakes Absolutely. from Alberta. So we used to see them come out in the spring. You'd get one giant female with seven or eight female uh, males all wrapped around them. Do you, what kind of garter snakes do we have around here? Well, in, here in Ontario, we have the eastern garter snakes, and uh, we also have ribbon snakes, which are closely related, and the butler's garter snake, which is another uh, species uh, that is at risk in southwestern Ontario. But if people see them around here, it's going to be the eastern garter snake that they would find. And those ones all have live babies? All garter snakes have live babies? All, all of the garter snakes have live babies along with uh, water snakes and various other species in Ontario, including the Massasauga rattlesnake. It also has live babies. So this milk snake is the one that people mistake most often for a Massasauga? Yeah, because it's fairly common and widespread, uh, you know, people when they encounter it for the first time especially, will think it's a rattlesnake because it does have a similar blotchy brown pattern along its back and it will shake its tail when it's scared. And if you find it, it's probably scared. So they will shake their tail like a rattlesnake, and it's silent on its own, but usually it's down on the ground, and it will rustle in the grass or bang against the ground, and it will sound just like a rattlesnake. They are really good at pretending. What kind of snakes and reptiles do you guys have on your location that we might possibly find, or even in Simcoe County for that? Well, throughout, throughout Simcoe County, we certainly have, besides the garter snakes and the milk snakes, in some parts where there's a lot of wetland remaining, we might have ribbon snakes. We have brown snakes and red-bellied snakes, which are very, very small, secretive snakes. They're quite widespread, but you just don't see them very much. Uh, you can still find brown snakes in the city of Toronto, for example. So they're quite good at surviving where there are people. In the more northern parts of, uh, of our area, you would find water snakes where there's some significant wetlands for them to be living around. And again, where there's not as many people uh, that you won't find them along the Lake Simcoe shoreline, for example. Just uh, too many people, too many boats, all that sort of thing. Massasauga rattlesnakes you could find in the northwestern part of our region, starting around Honey Harbor and working up the shoreline of Georgian Bay. Uh, that's where you would find Massasauga rattlesnakes. You see, this fox snake looks a lot like a milk snake. Yeah, this fox snake does look a lot like a milk snake. Um, what, how can you tell the difference between the two of them? 
Well, for the fox snake, for one thing, they're larger. This one is quite young. It could be about a meter and a half in length. So it is the Let's largest snake. see how long this one is. Well, this one is nearly a meter for stretch it out. Yeah. But it's also quite slender body. As it gets, gets bigger and older, it'd be not just longer, but it'd be thicker around as well. How big around do they get? Uh, it could be about that big around for a good size one. Oh, okay. Also, they have a fairly orangey colored head. Uh, and that's a big difference as they get, to, especially to, uh, to adults, their head is quite the bronze or copper orangey color. This one is found really only within 300 meters of the Georgian Bay shoreline from Honey Harbor northwards. Uh, that's about it for uh, this region. And that's a big part of its global range. It is a globally endangered species. It is more rare than a peregrine falcon. And yet most people have never even heard of it before. I think that's something we need to change. Uh, in Canada, most endangered things uh, are reptiles. Yes. 80% of our reptiles are species at risk. That's really? more than any other category of wildlife. They're, uh, they're really in a lot of trouble across our country. And uh, we need to turn some things around if we're, uh, we're going to change it. Keep in mind that uh, if you're looking for snakes, uh, for one thing, make sure you're not on private property, you don't want to be trespassing. Uh, keep in mind that uh, some of these things are protected species. If they're endangered, uh, threatened, that sort of thing, uh, you want to make sure that you're not impacting them at all. Thanks okay. again for showing them to us, and we really appreciate your time today. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming. Thanks for helping to spread the message about snakes and turtles. And well, thank you for having a message. This is the part I love. <laughs> this is great. This is like the Blair Witch Project. If you aren't willing to severely mangle yourself, I probably wouldn't recommend this. Because this is not a stable structure. <laughs> this place you almost is need a awesome. tetanus shot before you go. Uh, yeah. Wow. Look at this wicked spider web. This is awesome. You can see the spider hanging out in its web. I think that's just a very young spider, but that's a, uh, it's not an orb weaver spider. Orb weavers make a very, what people think of when they think of spider webs. These ones are more of a mishmash. One of the fascinating things about spider webs is that they just found out that they're neutrally or negatively charged. And when insects flap their wings, they actually produce several hundred volts of a positive charge. And when they get close to the spider web, they actually draw each other closer together. And the web then almost reaches out and grabs the flying insects and pulls them in. Helps it, maintain uh, that charge because the opposites attract and like stuck a right in there. Like a dime to a magnet. Even the birds realize they shouldn't be nesting in here anymore. So birds nest down here. But of course, Rachel and Chris are just crazy enough to come on in. I'm kind of hesitant to move anything that might be holding this place up. <laughs> One of the big problems I have right now is this 4x2 is all that's holding it up, 
and it's actually chopped at the bottom, so it's really only one inch around that's holding it up. <laughs> so I'm going to leave now. <laughs> and I think everybody else should probably do the same. There are rocks. I know there are rocks, but there are rocks outside of this rickety little thing, too. Oh, my gosh. Still wicked in here, though. Well, we didn't find anything, but that's the type of building you're looking for yeah. when you're searching for snakes. But be careful. That was in pretty rough shape. And we have permission to be here. And we did have permission to go off trails. Rachel's in the water now. She's got her dip net and no shoes. So, what did you find? Oh, look at this, minnows. Well, I don't need, think I'll need my snake hook for this one, but you've got... This was right at the shoreline? Yep. One, two, three, four. Gee, look at them all. There's got to be at least 15 of them in there. So that is what newts, salamanders, frogs, fish, snakes. birds, snakes, all the garter snakes we saw. We can put those back in. Have you found anything over here, Rach? Oh, I can see minnows. Look at them all. That's not even a minnow anymore. That's almost a real fish. But compared to the other ones that we just saw, that one's well started. Really cold water coming through, and it just goes and feeds this really large stream. And Rach is up to her, well, past her ankles now with the dip net. And at scales, they actually encourage kids to come out and use the dip nets. That's nice. You develop a connection with nature where you can actually get up to your knees, although, no, I guess there's people swimming in the river too, and actually try and catch things. Here's a freshwater clam, a bivalve, meaning two. Look at that. So there's no way I'm cracking that open because it's sealed itself shut. As soon as it is comfortable and it thinks it's not exposed, it will actually open up its shell and the actual clam will come out. And this is a freshwater clam. We found it right there in the stream. The clam will come out and start sifting and silting through the, the sand on the bottom and look for food. But when it feels like it's gonna be attacked or something comes after it, even a fish tries to nibble it, seals up, and you cannot get into that. Here is a jumping spider, which are actually very clever, and they're ambush hunters. They can actually jump several times their own body length. This one was found hiding underneath a rock, and it is a predator. It doesn't look very big, look how small it is, compared to a fingernail, but this is actually using its eyes, which are very, very accurate. They can judge distance when they jump, and they can actually tell what's coming, predator or prey, and they will be able to size up distance when they jump, as well as potential danger that comes from the top. And these tend to hide out because they will dry out if they're out in the sun for too long. A couple of minutes like this is fine. But that is a gorgeous, clever little spider. Oh, this one's got more fossils in it, but these ones are plants. You can see. They're similar. Yeah. So some of these plants have been around this area for a long time. And there's the proof. And ants will actually be in here breaking down the material inside the plants, turning it into food, looking after their young. But these ones are even beyond their reach. They've been in here a long time. Fossils don't happen overnight. This is something that is in a geological scale, which means old, really old. We survived another adventure, and this time we were at Scales Nature Park. So we saw all sorts of things. I didn't get to catch a snake with our snake hook it's on the trails. I know, soon, I'll find one soon. But Jeff did show us, and we did get to handle some cool reptiles. We I got, got to handle the fox snake. Fox snake, all right, and I got the milk snake. Yep. Yep. So it was a full day. And we found a puzzle reed that I used to play with when I was a kid. You take them apart, and you put them back together again. And if you're really, really bored and tired of getting beat up by your brother and sister while you're out canoeing, 
It's a really good distraction. Is this the original Lego from That's nature? like the original Lego. Thanks for joining us on Out and About in Simcoe County, and we'll see you next time. Take care.